हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल डॉक्टर एम फाइल्स सो इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द पैनक्रेटिक फंक्शन टेस्ट सो लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द पैनक्रेटिक फंक्शन टेस्ट सो एक्चुअली आई विल टीच यू द पैनक्रेटिक फंक्शन टेस्ट इन द ऑर्गन फंक्शन सो इन दिस सेक्शन वी विल ओनली डिस्कस द रिपोर्ट्स एंड द वैल्यूज ऑफ द पैनक्रेटिक पैनक्रेटिक फंक्शन टेस्ट कंसिस्ट ऑफ basically three test one is amylase the second is lipase and the third is trypsin so basically human diet consists of carbohydrate fat and protein and pancreas has all the three enzymes which digest carbohydrate fat and protein so so amylase takes part in the digestion of carbohydrate and it is also ca called 1,4 alpha d glucan glucanohydrolase and this is the only pancreatic enzyme which has two secretive organ one is salivary gland and it is called salivary amylase and the other we know is the pancreas which is called the pancreatic amylase so the amylase content in human body or a human serum which we uh, diagnose is actually consist of both the salivary amylase and the pancre pancreatic amylase so actually what we analyze in serum is called the total amylase so it is total amylase and with, it is very interesting that the total amylase consist of only 60 to 70% of the pancreatic pancreatic Whereas the amylase. rest of the amylase is contributed by the salivary gland so since amylase consists of salivary amylase and pancreatic amylase oh, it is not considered so, as a very reliable enzyme in the uh, diagnosis of pancreatitis the pancreatic amylase start rising within the 5 to 8 hours of the actual infection of the pancreas so like i told you that amylase is not a very effective tool to diagnose pancreatitis because it consists of salivary amylase as well as it consists of pancreatic amylase and also there are few condition which is intra abdominal disorder and extra pancreatic condition in which amylase raises so you can get confused with those diseases that whether it is pancreatitis or those diseases so you got to know those diseases which are uh, reliable uh, of false increase of pancreatitis false increase of uh amylase in the human serum so what are those diseases those are first is biliary tract infection so any biliary tract infection whether it is a cholangitis cholelithiasis cholecystitis this all will raise a amylase intestinal obstruction any type of intestinal obstruction whether it is a small intestine obstruction a large intestine obstruction it will always raise a amylase in serum so mesenteric infarction perforated peptic ulcer so if the ulcer gets perforated amylase will false raise in the human serum ruptured aortic aneurysm acute appendicitis this is very important because a lot of times we get confused with the acute appendicitis with the pancreatitis because once we do the amylase we get the serum value raised and we thought it's uh, pancreatitis but actually it's a ac acute append appendicitis and the diagnosis will be confirmed by the other instrumental and other uh, blood uh, examinations so the uh, the next is peritonitis peritonitis is also one of the reason when amylase is raised now we come to the extra pancreatic condition so these were actually uh, condition which were intra abdominal disorder and extra pancreatic conditions are very important is ectopic pregnancy so if someone is having ectopic pregnancy the amylase can be raised salpingitis ovarian malig malignancy salivary gland lesion so salivary gland lesion you can understand because the secretion of amylase is also comes from uh salivary glands so if any lesion can raise the total serum value of the amylase now chronic liver disease any chronic liver disease can contribute to the rise of the amylase diabetic ketoacidosis septic shock these are the condition in which you can get a false positive value of the serum amylase so you got to be sure that when you are 
looking for a pancreatitis you must exclude these condition which is intra abdominal disorder and extra pancreatic condition to confirm your diagnosis as a pancreatitis and last but not the least any malignancy can raise amylase up to 50 times of the normal range and what is the normal range the normal range is 31 to 107 u per liter so most significantly i would like to tell you that the amylase should not be considered in a small children or neonates because the pancreatic function of serum amylase secretion is not well developed in the small kids so in that case please consider lipase as a diagnostic criteria and that is because the salivary amylase start functioning well as a adult one after the five years of the age so let's come to the lipase lipase i have already told you that it's actually fat digestive enzymes and triacylglycerol acyl hydrolase is the another name for the lipase actually it what it does it hydrolyzes long fatty acid or a long chain of fatty acids and it further uh, involves in the uh, digestion of the fatty acid which will further metabolizes into uh, glycerol on a three molecule of fatty acid so actually this is a very very specific enzyme because it start raising within the four to eight hours of the insult of the pancreas and it can raise up to 50 times of the normal value and what is the normal value so this is 45 it can reach up to 2500 and even more so good about and this enzyme that it stays in the blood longer than amylase and you know it stays in the blood approximately two weeks from the date of recovery of the pancreas as the value of the normal range is sufficient enough to diagnose the pancreatitis. Let's compare amylase and lipase in the terms of accuracy and the presence of the blood. So if you look at the graph, this amylase, this is lipase and this is amylase. So amylase starts about later than the lipase and it stays it doesn't go much higher in the value and it stays in the blood not more than four to five days so it normalizes after the four to five days and gets to the normal range approximately after the after whereas maybe. lipase starts earlier than amylase it reaches its peak much higher than the amylase and gets normalized after the uh, recovery and it stays in the blood more than even 7 days which goes up to 14 days or 2 weeks. That is why lipase is greater of value in diagnosis than amylase because amylase comes in the blood later goes away earlier whereas lipase comes earlier and goes later than the amylase. So lipase has greater significance than amylase in diagnosing pancreatitis. And also lipase does not have any other enzyme whereas amylase has a salivary amylase. So generally in emergency department we consider lipase as a diagnostic criteria for the pancreatitis. So trypsin, trypsin is a protolytic enzyme and this is actually comes as a trypsin 1 and trypsin 2. Trypsin is secreted in the form of zymogen to protect the intestinal mucosa because it's made up of protein and it's a proteolytic enzyme. So trypsin 1 is always greater than the trypsin 2 in a healthy condition and the ratio is generally 4 is to 1. Whereas in case of pancreatitis, The trypsin 2 is always higher than trypsin 1 and again the ratio is to 4 is to 1. So in case of pancreatitis, we diagnose trypsin 2 and if it is higher than trypsin 1, it, the, the analysis the of trypsin takes longer period of time. So that's why we generally don't uh, analyze 
trypsin in the laboratory we rely mostly on the lipase and amylase and more precisely lipase because that's the better tool better enzyme to diagnose pancreatitis case of cystic fibrosis this test has a significance value because in case of cystic fibrosis the pancreatic duct is blocked by the thick mucus and so the because of the blockage the trypsin level gets raised and that will be a criteria for the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis which can be concluded by the further evaluation i hope you guys have understood the pancreatic function test and its importance in the diagnosis of pancreatitis and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much for your attention bye